Hey, everybody. Um, I was, uh, I've recently become interested in Hacks, really neat programming language. Uh, it's been in development for about four years. Uh, what's neat about it is it's open source and it's multi multi-platform. Uh, the idea is that uh, you program in one language, a standardized language with a bunch of features. Uh, it's a lot like ActionScript 3, um, so much so that there is a page on the Hacks website that gives you sort of some some small syntactical differences between the two, but it has more features, so it's you know it's a better version or whatever you want to say. Um, uh, what's cool is you can retarget, so you can use the Hacks language, and then you can retarget to JavaScript and Flash, and it's got its own virtual machine called Neko. You can retarget to PHP and C++, and soon you'll be able to retarget to C Sharp and Java. Um, and it has uh, a standardized library that works, that's, that works the same on all platforms. And of course you can also access the uh, full APIs for any given platform uh, as well. Um, what I wanted to do is just kind of take a basic look at the Hacks uh, language and just kind of the general of uh, the, um, the standard libraries and kind of how you set up a project, a real simple project. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, uh, I'm gonna use uh, the Sublime Text Editor as the uh, as the IDE. Um, I like it. It's it's simple and uh, it's got it also has with an additional installation it has support for uh, hacks syntax coloring and the hacks uh, language. Before we do that I w I've got that installed already and I have to I have to install the package uh, manager for that but let's download or actually I've already downloaded hacks you can get it for Windows, Mac and for Linux and if you have, if you're using Linux, uh, there is a an, an IDE that supports supports Linux called FDT, um, and also you can of course use Flash Develop. But the reason I'm using uh, Sublime is because it's uh, in my I feel like it's simpler, at least for what we're doing here. Uh, it's going to be like two files as opposed to some of the other. Uh, you know, ha Flash Develop creates more files, and this is easier to understand. So I've already downloaded Hacks, and I'm just going to install it real quick. And I'll let it I'll let it put itself you know in the in the default directory. Now I want to pull up a, a command line, and I'll just type hacks to make sure it's installed. And yes, it works. Um, you see, 2.09 as of this recording. Hacks also comes with another really cool uh, program called Hackslib, and that is the a manager for all the, the libraries. And uh, I happen to know that I'm gonna tr hopefully in this little tutorial, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to uh, probably try to retarget and generate some C++ code with the stuff we're doing. And that requires a library called HXCPP. So I'm going to install that real quick and then we'll uh, then we'll be able to get going. So I'm going to leave that and let that go ahead and finish. And now, now I want to turn my attention back to the Sublime Text Editor, um, which I already have installed. And um, and yes, I've registered it. Love it. It's a great piece of software. I'm going to go ahead and uh, search for the Sublime Text Package Manager. And that should come up. Boom. Right there. So wbond.net. And I'm just going to click Install. And basically all you do is you copy this chunk of Python. It's Python. Come back into Sub Sublime Text here. Hit Control tilde and Control v to paste that down there. Hit Enter. And basically it's told me, yep, I'm good, and restart. So I'm going to do that. And I'll come back in. I'll hit Control shift p to get to the context menu. And I'll type in package. And there it is, package control. We want to install a package. And the package we want to install is called hacks. And there it is, the Sublime 2 bundle for hacks. Boom. Installing. And it's finished. So good. Now, we've got that done. Now let's start taking a look. Let's take a look at... Uh, the API for this. Now, uh, this, as it's a lot like ActionScript, uh, this stuff is kind of contained, in, it's contained in packages. So you get, you basically, you can make packages and you can consume packages. And so these are, these right here are packages. Um, and to do that, you, you import, you, to get access, you import them. It's a lot like, uh, the using statement in C Sharp. Um, <clears throat> but let's, let's go over here and let's make us a new file and we'll save it here. Let's call it test.hx um, so now so we, we don't need to import anything first what we'll do is we'll create a class and that's the uh, that's the plugin starting up there 
for the context completion. We'll create a class and we'll call it uh, we'll call it test because you know it's it's a test and we'll make a uh, static function. We'll call it main because you know hacks needs to know where to start so we're going to have a main in here so that's where that's where the program starts going to be and let's just toss in a trace the trace statement is it's a debugging statement that uh, you know helps you debug your programs uh, so we'll do that and now there is that's actually a functioning that would that is a functioning a functional hacks program right there uh, let me close that let's 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 make that half okay um, in order to compile it, all I have to do is run hacks, uh, and I want the target to be uh, let's let's have the target to be um, to be Neko, and <clears throat> I have to tell it where the main method, the the static main method, is located, and that's located in the test class, and the out well, well, I need I need the output here. We'll just call it test.in for Neko, and boom. Okay, so we have now this test.in file. So we've compiled this. So in order to run this with for the neck with the Neko virtual machine, which again comes with with hacks, we just say Neko, and test.in, and boom, we got a trace, and it 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 even tells you what line, you know, the trace is on. Boom, hello there, right? So um, cool. I basically built it with that command and run it with this command. Um, but let's let's get a little bit more sophisticated because, you know, there's a lot of, I mean, you know, typing this every time or adding or changing this is kind of, you know, let's 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 put this in a configuration file. We'll put it in. We can what you can do is we can make another file. And we'll go ahead and save it. And I'm going to call it and for the purposes of the Sublime Text plugin, we'll have to call it build.hxml. Okay, and it needs to go in the same directory that the .hx file goes in. Okay, and all we have to do is we put whatever we you know put our um, our command line options. Uh, on, we can put one per line or however we want to do it. I kind of like doing one per line because uh, I don't know it's just nice and easy to read. So we'll just do the same thing that we did like that. And so now now that I have this build file, I just saved it by the way. Uh, I can go over here and I can hit F7 and see. It built again, and uh, so you see the it it built the dot uh, the dot in file. See four thirty eight here, four thirty nine. So we built it. Um, one of the one of the other things that you can do. So right trace is more of a debugging thing. So what if I want to you know what if I want to get rid of that? I don't want, I don't want that in there. Um, you can do that, and you can remove you can basically completely remove it from your program so that there's no calls or anything made made like that. So basically, you have it in for debugging, and then you can take it out. Well, how do you take it out? There's an option that's called minus minus <clears throat> no dash traces. So if I build with that, if I build with that, I come back over here, hit F7, and then I run. You don't see anything because I've taken the traces out, so they're not they're not called. You don't even see them, right? Um, and then, by the way, you can comment things out with in the H XML file using the pound sign the pound key, whatever the pound symbol. Uh, <clears throat> so let's just take a look. So there's the trace function, right? Well, there's also a class called sys, and uh, that's available. You know, you know, it's a standard package that's included by default. Uh, and there's a there's one there is a function in there called what did you guess it? Print hello. And if we do that. Uh, I, I took remember I took no traces out so traces are going to be enabled but you're also going to see this now uh, and there you go and now you know if I put if I put this back in to take the traces out we would still see the print so if you want actual prints to the screen that's how you do it that's how you do it um, and uh, sys also has several other useful methods and you can see that in the API here. Now, not the not the lowercase sys, not the sys packages, but the the sys class here. And uh, you can see all that. So you can get arguments. You know, it returns arguments that were passed by the command line. So you know, I can uh, I can 
do stuff like this. Uh, I can say sys dot what is it args? Is that what I said? Args, yes. We'll just do a trace on this trace. And we'll just print we'll, we'll print the first argument of course we're going to assume that there's an argument and we'll get we'll just give it one all right just compiled it and i'll give it an argument and so see prints the argument if i wanted to uh, print all the arguments that were available i can use the for loop and the for loop syntax is kind of interesting so you say four and then i declare my variable uh, three ellipses and then i want to say i want to say sys dot args and I want the length of that array all right and then I can say I'll take this actually I don't even have to do that I'll just take this down here and we'll use I to index it build it and have an error which is Uh, let's see. Oh, 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 sorry. Got to tell it where, it's, where to start from for i n 0 to now. Uh, and now it'll print, you know, however many we have. It'll, it'll trace those for us, as you can see. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, um, of course, you've got things like, you know, the executable path, which at this point will be if we ran it on this this Neko. Well, let, we, let, let's go ahead and do that. That's real easy to do. We'll do this just real quick. This will give me a chance to try out the C++ uh, targeting. Uh, let's, let's just comment that out. And as you can see, it uses the standard C, multi-line and single line. It also supports the single line comments. Uh, let's trace uh, sys dot executable path. What you'll get here is uh, a path to the Neko virtual machine. Now, let's retarget because we can. And that's one of the neat things about hacks, right? So let's do, let's retarget to C++. And by the way, on Microsoft Windows, it's going to look for Visual Studio, you know, whatever, 2010, 2011, whatever you have. It'll try to find that. I've installed Visual Studio 2010 Express well, Visual, Visual C++ Express 2010 on this on this machine, so it it should find it. I haven't tried this yet, so let's say output C. You gotta give it a directory name. So there's the directory name. So what it'll do is it'll retarget, compile, compile us a native executable for C. No no Neko virtual machine. Let's actually comment that out. So let's do a build and see what happens. Yep, see there it goes. Okay, come on. Takes a little while, doesn't it? Done. Um, and see, there's my output C directory. And whoop, there it is, test.exe. Kind of big, but, you know, so I can run it. There you go. Now, now you can see the executable is the actual executable and not from the virtual machine. So there's, there's an example of retargeting, you know, and that actually, that generated... Uh, that actually generated uh, um, C code. See here in the source. See all this C code, and there's you know there's your there's one of your cool advantages of this this language this platform if you will. Let's go back to Neko. So now that we've done that, um, just a couple more things, and then I'll I'll leave you alone here. <laughs> let's let's just let's write to a file real quick. Uh, um, it's nice to be able to do this, you know. All, all of all uh, programming language you can write to file. Programming languages you can write to files, right? We don't even have to put the public in there. Let's just do static function write file, okay? And we'll just we're, we we could put we could let's do that. Let's put a parameter in here. So how you do parameters? Name of the parameter, and then you do a colon, and then the parameter type. So we're going to do a string, okay? 
And uh, return types of functions go on the end, and you do a colon also. And if you want to return void, you can hit void or int, whatever you want to return. But in this case, I, I want to return void, so you just leave it like this. Now, this is going to require, since we're going to be using... Um, we're going to be using some stuff from the sys package because we want sys.io. We want this file class, and it's going to give us a file output uh, object. So we are going to do a, uh, an, an import. So we'll import. We want to do sys.io.file because that's the one we want. We want the file class. Now, declaring a variable in hacks simple uh, you just say var and remember hacks is uh, a, a statically typed languages language but it will do dynamic you know assignments kind of like a, you know it, it it can figure it out right it's smart enough to figure out what type it is based on what you've assigned to it like if I say h equals you know 9, 14 well it's going to be an int and then after, from then on it's going to be typed statically typed as an int so it's kind of nice you don't have to declare the type if you're doing assignments um, and we're going to do that because we're going to say Let's do f equals, and we'll do file uh, dot write. So write is going to open us up a, 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 a file, and we'll just say name. So we're going to use name as the file name. And then the next, the next uh, argument is, um, is it a binary file? And it's not a binary file. We want a, we want a uh, text file. Now all we have to do is do... We, we have a, an instance of that file input. That file, that's what the F is now because write returns a file, I'm sorry, file output uh, object. So F is a file output object. So I happen to know that you can, all, you can uh, call write string on a file output object. And you can say hacks or whatever you want to say. Hacks is good. All right. And you can write whatever you want, and I think you can, I'm sure there are other functions to write numbers and things like that. I actually haven't checked. Um, I'm, I actually, I think that's in the abstract stuff, which I think is under here. Isn't it? Maybe not. Uh, oh, oh, no. Anyway, uh, there's probably like a write... Um, I don't know, write int, write float, whatever. Uh, <clears throat> in any case, we're, we're just keeping it simple right now. So I'm going to write that one string, and then we'll just close the file. Okay. And then we're going to, let's just do this, just to make sure that we're running and everything. Now I'm going to call this function write file. And we'll give it a, we'll just give it a name, out.text. So that's what we're going to, that's what it's going to call. Compile it. And we'll run it. Uh, let's just necho test dot in. All right, let's check it. There's your out file, and it has hacks is good in it. Okay, nice, easy, uh, no problem. One other thing, this is this is one thing that I had to kind of look around in because there was uh, apparently there's they've moved a couple of the things around in the in the recent months or whatever and one of which is uh, reading from standard input so let's do uh, let's let's make a function called read standard input and for this one uh, we'll make a var um, doesn't matter what it is var s and we'll say sys this the standard in in the newest version of hacks is in the sys class so sys dot s t d i n and then we'll say uh, there's a function called read line in there. And that will read the line and return a string. And then we can just trace that string. Okay. And let's call it read standard in. We'll comment this out. I just compiled it, by the way. Now it's waiting for my input. And I'll say input is here. And you see it. It gets it. Gets it. Um, uh, let's see the standard class the standard class has some other good stuff in it you can parse floats from a string you can parse integers from a string here uh, and there's the random function a ran you know the random function uh, and you can convert value any value to a string uh, you can convert a float to an int you know uh, so good class the standard class just remember that um, 
and of course the sys class which we looked at our we didn't we look at that we did look at that didn't we you got your print you got your print line which which adds a uh, adds a new line this one just is like if you do C sharp it's like console dot write and this is like console dot write line um, which is I'm sure what it will translate to when they have C sharp support there's your set current working directory there's your put environment set local time there's your sleep all the good stuff standard in standard out standard errors all in here too and you can get the system name of whatever it is you're running on which is kinda nice so if you want to do anything conditionally dependent upon that you can uh, uh, you also got some some cool lambda stuff that you can do um, there's generic support the array class is a generic array so you can you can uh, you can type it however you want um, and let's see what else uh, there was also oh uh, sys you, you can also you know do processes right you can make processes and execute stuff and there is a under the uh, yeah under the sys uh, package under IO there is a process class that you can you can start up processes you can get their exit codes and you can connect up to their standard in standard out if you just want to execute a simple process you can do uh, you can go to the sys class and uh, there's a, there's a uh, a function called command and it takes a string for the command and an array uh, of arguments and let me let's just do that real quick uh, and I'll just do it directly so if I wanted to call that I would say sys dot uh, command and we'll just we'll just call the command prompt you know actually command and I'm gonna there's so here's my array you know my there's my gonna be my string array right here and I'm just going to put, uh, we're going to call, we're going to do directory in here. We'll just do dr. Boom. We'll compile it. And we'll execute it. And what did I mess up? Uh, oh. No, there's slash cdr there we go I just had to tell it where I guess so there you go executed executed a command nice simple and let's see does it return yeah it returns the uh, whoops it returns the uh, the the uh, command result which is nice so just as it's just a small uh, you know introduction um, I want to get let's see what time is it yeah let me um, let me do this real quick. Let's because you know the the array uh, class is pretty cool. Uh, like I said, it's uh, it's generic, so you can make it integers, floats, strings, whatever class you know class based, whatever. Let's let me show you the uh, let's let's do a, a little array demonstration. Let's say uh, sort array, right? So that's a lot. That's you know you want to sort arrays a lot. Uh, and programming um, and let's go to the array class real quick to show you what I'm talking about so we'll, we'll fill that let's fill an array with something with a bunch of stuff we'll fill it with a bunch of strings and we'll go we want to do this right so we're gonna we want to make a function that will sort sort an array for us so it's gonna call the function that we give it and it and that function is gonna return an integer right so let's do that let's first off let's make the array so we'll make it a P we'll make it an array of string and we'll just assign it. it's pretty cool you can just assign it like this let's do a we'll just do some colors in here and let's do purple Okay, so there's your array. Where we're gonna and what we want to do is we want to sort it. Um, so what we need to do according to according to this, we need to make a function. Let me just dock that over here. Oh, that's much nicer. Let's make a function uh, to do that. And the function it says right here that it's gonna take it's gonna take an x and a y of whatever type t that we have, and it's gonna return. There you go. 
It tells you exactly zero if it's equal and greater than zero if it's if x is greater, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's make a function down here: static sort sort, and we want an a. Well, we just call it an x because that's what is it? string and y. And we'll call that it's a string also. And now we want it to return an int. So there's my return type now. Oh, and I also need function here. Okay. So now we just do some simple comparisons. If x is less than y, uh, then let's return negative 1. And if x is greater than y, then return 1. And else. Oops. Else return zero because they're equal. So there you go. There's our there's our function. Um, so if we want to we want now we want to sort it. So all we do is we say p dot sort, and we give it. Let's let's make this sort of a. Now let's call it sort func. So we'll just call it like that, and now let's print it out. So we'll do for i in zero dot 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 uh, p dot length, right? And let's do let's instead of let's do sys dot print. Uh, is it ln? Let's see if we can get that right. Uh, and then we'll do p of i. So we'll see how how it's how it's sorted. So we'll come up here and we'll try that sort array. Compile it. Everything's good. Let's run it and see what happens. Boom. So blue, brown, green, purple, red. So we have sorted it from red, green, blue, brown, purple. And we can we can see that if we want. I can take the sort out, recompile it, we'll run it again and see. So it's kind of neat stuff. Um, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, of course, you know, you can diddle with this and make different sort functions you know it's uh it's really cool stuff um just a few things you know that i've that i've learned figured out uh hopefully this is helpful and um it's been fun and uh i will uh see you later